So, since Alana watched this video and I saw that it existed, I, I just, I just, I just needed to watch the video on my own. Looks alright, I'm more of a rodent guy though, that's fair. <laughs> What does the fuck say? What does the fuck say? Hi, <laughs> Cleo. <laughs> the snake carrying of foxes is so adorable. I can't. They're so adorable. No, go on. They scare me. They Amalgamandrite. Amalgamandrite! What's up? Welcome, welcome in! I can kill you. Dude! The snickering, I can't. The snickering is so adorable. Oh my god, like, look at his face! It's hot, hot! Hi! Alright, pop quiz. What mm -hmm. is the most widespread carnivore? Boxes are so they are carnivore. loud! Out of all of those animals in the world, I which one managed loud. to spread further and thrive in more places than any other? Is this is really the fox? By the way. Comment your answer. Wow. I'm actually curious. All votes in? Okay, good. It's the red fox. I don't know when it happened, but somewhere in the history of Earth, there was a subplot where the fox took over the world, and it's they like have not let up since. <laughs> Today, there's about 23 flavors of fox seasoning this big ball of dirt and water, with well Ooh. over 40 subspecies on Ooh. the roster. And they are everywhere. That's From so briefing cute gardens and in the pretty. suburbs, to pickpocketing polar bears in the north, to murking koalas in Australia. Trust and believe we're gonna get to that. You can find some Vulpes variant virtually Aww. anywhere in the world that isn't the ocean or Antarctica. <laughs> and the biggest flag. I actually saw some foxes around the area here. I already saw a couple foxes, like three, four times. I saw some foxes around the area here. Ah, oh, so a fucking adorable. I can't. It's like a husky on drugs. I've been in the same enclosure with two foxes. Like, what happened? How did you get there? I really want to know if having a fox as a pet, if that's the eagle. Um, I think it depends on the country. And I think, I think in Russia, there's a farm that's uh, trying to domesticate uh, foxes, if I recall correctly. I think it was Russia. I'm not 100% sure. We had an entire family in our backyard. Oh my god, that's so adorable. We don't really have foxes in this country, which is probably for the best because we have a lot of native birds that can fly at on this ground. Oh shit. Next of the foxes is the red fox. Despite being in the weight class of a small dog, no other mammalian carnivore owns more real estate. And wow. even though they're invited to the carnivore cookout, technically they're omnivores, which means they eat, and I do not say Anything. this lightly, everything. Rabbits, yeah. rodents, birds, frogs, worms, fish, crabs, clams, insects, lizards, eggs, fruits, plants, garbage, cat food, dog food, carry on, and I don't mean the bag, and actual <laughs> feces. Literally, their whole meal plan is what? if it doesn't kill them first, they'll eat it. Foxes are also able to eat shit. Hold up. That's news to me. Who says fennec fox is allowed? Oh, I've seen fennec foxes. I actually seen some videos about the fennec foxes being owned. They're so adorable. I'm an animal caretaker, and there was a petting zoo where they did an internship and they had them. Oh my god! That is even petting are so loud and funny. Fields in order to catch bodies. You've probably seen this thing foxes do where they'll swan dive into a pile of snow. So cute. It's called mousing, and foxes are able to use mousing. magnetic fields as this kind of internal GPS, and they cross reference that with a broken sense of hearing to figure out exactly where their target is and exactly where to land a critical hit. Foxes pretty much have a real life wall hack, and they're one of the few animals to hunt like this. They're also smart enough to memorize the migration patterns of certain species of birds, meaning they know the exact time to pull up for free and easy protein. Foxes also manage to figure out the same so with some turtles, since timing it right after they lay their eggs and peace out means low effort omelets. Call that oh. over easy. And arguably, no place has oh foxed around God. and found out more than Australia. Cause way back in the 1800s, Europeans airdropped red foxes to the land down under for the sport of fox hunting. Evident a fennec fox looks like an eevee but not brown and smaller ears. It kind of does, that's true, that's true. Also eevee is a little bit more fluffy than a uh, fennec fox I would say. But I, I guess if compared to any animal, I guess eevee would look the most like a fennec fox. You are very true. Evidently, the foxes weren't about to go down like that. To the point where a couple years ago, it's estimated that over 7 million foxes exist in Australia as a perpetual wow. middle finger to the settlers that thought they'd be light work. 
Some unhinged foxes even learn to climb trees in order to snatch baby koalas and sugar gliders. Oh, Jesus proving Christ. that any animal that gets introduced to Australia will inevitably become a problem. And now, foxes and feral cats are like the Kobe and Shaq of putting native Australian animals on a shirt. That ability to adapt <laughs> means foxes are one of the very few predators that do better in cities. Not as well, not almost as well, no, better. Today, the highest density of foxes living in Britain are shacking it up in the city. Wow. In some neighborhoods, you'll find twice as many foxes- Well, I did just say, like literally here in the neighborhood, I already saw some foxes and I'm still in Berlin. I'm not on the edge of the city or anything. I'm like more towards the, I'm not in the middle of the city, but I'm also not on the edge of the city. Like there's a, there are parks here as well and shit, but it's just foxes in a neighborhood, in like a huge apartment building. It's like crazy. Only imagine having a penguin as a pet. <laughs> a penguin as a pet? <laughs> Welcome to Britain. We have lots of them. You do? Oh my god. I want more foxes. Families than you would in the countryside, and 200 times as many than in some desolate moors. And even though they get straight up bullied by bigger canines, foxes don't rely on a pack structure the same oh, way wolves pretty. do. And they have enough pretty privilege to dodge the smoke everyone seems to have for coyotes. Actually, it also though. helps that they're nocturnal and move like introverts. Mama Fox will go out of her way to clean the den area so well that the average person could walk right past it and not even realize there's a whole family underground. Wow. And just like with birds, foxes will study and memorize the schedule of humans in the area and only come out when it's least active. They'll even take advantage of garbage schedules so they know exactly when to come root through your trash. That's so and they'll smart. even take note of what times you often feed your pets so that they can steal their share and you may <laughs> never even notice depending on where you live you can probably count on one hand how many foxes you've seen in your Look neighborhood at this little baby though oh my god just give him food he can have all the food just just give him all the food oh my god take my food here take take all of it take all of my possessions honestly take my pc take my apartment take everything but ravens take down bears and that's my jeez. Ravens are so fucking smart. But even if you've lived around them your entire life, and lucky for them, they happen to be just cute enough to not have to worry about getting their existence nuked like some of their predators. Speaking of which, let's talk about the many enemies of the fox. You got wolves, coyotes, cougars, lynxes, birds of prey, bears, wolverines, cars, and many, many more. Because the one bad thing about being a fox is everything on the census either wants to eat you or wants to kill you because you eat the same things. In fact, the first and sometimes last enemy they'll make is their family. Fox cubs will fight their siblings off rip in order to establish a hierarchy. And it's well not the damn. few Disney play fighting I used to think it was. 20% of fox kids born will never leave the den. It's wow. just straight violence out the womb. I can't even say it's on site since baby foxes live the Helen Keller experience for the first two weeks of their life. Lucky for them, foxes often I know, mate for life I know and bring up the fox. kids. I, I know save the fox. I watch them. I, I watch them every few days, man. Constantly. I, I love that. Finny and fox, man. Oh, Finny. Finny. Finnegan is getting so old now, though. Finnegan is really old now. Together. I mentioned this in the Father's Day episode last video, but fox fathers will hide food around the den in these little pantries in order to teach his kids how to find food for themselves. Wow. I want you to keep that pantry thing in wow. mind. We're going to come back to that. Fox cubs have a couple months of a grace period before they have to go out and figure out life on their own. Lucky for them, they're part of the most unfairly versatile group of animals you'll ever see. Like, did you know foxes can climb trees? No, I don't mean like fully scale that, John. The gray fox has been seen ascending over 70 feet up into a tree, and they're one of the wow. few foxes that flex retractable claws, which allows gray foxes to avoid conflict with predators hmm. like coyotes. Go ahead and ask cheetahs how important that is. Tree climbing only proves that foxes are just cat software marrying dog hardware. A cat dog, if you will. Jesus. And it shows that there isn't a Literally lot of real estate on earth a that a fox can't claim. And no fox proves this more than my personal favorite, the Arctic fox. Because this igloo puppy has zero business surviving. Arctic foxes are so pretty. Also, retractable claws. Yep. Very useful. <laughs> Dude, Arctic foxes are so floofy. Oh, they are so pretty and so floofy. Hiding out here. Not only is it cold enough to get one shot Let's by wind, the other. Arctic what fox the also fuck? has ops like wolves and polar bears to worry about. And since pretty much anything goes in Satan's ice rink, both of them will not hesitate to eat a fun-sized fox. And it really be your own kind, since another unlikely menace to an ice fox's life is the red fox. Because oh, as what? small as they are, the red fox is still two to three times bigger than their snowy cousins. Oh, wow. And yes, red foxes will 100% murk and eat their weaker relatives if it means surviving. So you'd think it'd be curtains for any pint-sized predator that even tries out here. Well, about that. 
Don't think for a second Arctic foxes don't have their tricks too. So pretty. They'll strategically follow polar bears for miles just to clean off whatever they don't finish. We're talking Fair. about a house cat sized fox slipping food from the literal biggest land oh my God. on the planet while also managing to stay far enough to avoid getting their consciousness Look at him. Them. These baby face survivors will even resort to scavenging the polar bear's food, except after it's already been digested and taken the south exit. Yeah, they're a different kind of potty mouth, but the Arctic fox has a secret to never having to miss a meal. These Q-tip terriers have a pantry oh. system where they'll bury any extra food in a network of underground dens, which can wow. stretch across 20 miles. Holy and shit! Food can, aren't you a red fox? I'm not a red fox, I'm a kitsune. That's the difference. <laughs> kitsune are just... they're just... Uh, they are something else. <laughs> I guess it would be based on a red fox more. I guess it would be based more on a red fox though, for me personally, yeah. You're a spirit fox, more or less, yeah. Like, if anything, I'm a kitsune. But based on a red fox, yeah. Look at that hair. Does that look red? She's putting the fox back in fox, yeah. <laughs> How is the fox search? Uh, very good. Very good. Going in the dead of winter. There was even one time where researchers uncovered a fox cellar containing 38 birds, four rabbits, and about a dozen eggs. Oh, it's hoarding on a thousand, but it's what keeps them Euro stepping death and mm. ghosting the Grim Reaper. This cotton colored canine has one more trick, too. Coming in all white helps the glacier jockey cosplay as a snowdrift in order yep. to avoid predators. But once the sun That's finally the makes an appearance one. like an absentee father on tax day, the longer daylight triggers hormonal changes. Oh. Changes that causes them to change coats. Oh, yeah. They go from white. They go. They so they go so gray and black and everything. It's incredible. It's crazy. Whiter than a yeah, party casual, in the Hampton. Casual geographic is really good. It's an our fox necklace, basically, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. Not really. To a thinner coat that matches the tundra the Arctic turns into. Must and it's all visibility yeah, that allows like the power. chameleon of foxes to live in one of the most unlivable places on Earth. And so does the smallest fox in the world. On the other side of the spectrum, the fennec fox survives in a very different kind of desert. It's the smallest fennec. canine in the world and could probably get bodied by a chihuahua. Those massive ears are good for three things. Increasing their overall surface oh, area to help keep them cool ears. the same way elephant ears do. Helping them pinpoint the insects, lizards, and rodents on its grocery list even while they're underground. And for looking absolutely adorable, dude. Oh. Like I said, foxes are broken. Especially since Fenix can live off the moisture they get from food and by licking the dew from their dens. Not only that, but their teeth are actually designed to function off very little actual water. Making this travel-sized fox one of the few <laughs> animals able to survive in the desert without drinking actual water. And as a human, you tap out from life after about three days of a water fast. In fact, where the fennec fox may never have to drink at all, the average adult should drink about 48 ounces a day. That's just over two of these. Which can often feel like a chore, but Arab's flavor pods oh makes God. it way easier. <laughs> These pods actually manage to trick your brain by using scent flavors traveling right. to your brain to replicate the taste of whatever pod you chose. The whole time you're just drinking plain water. Oh just my fill God. the bottle up, pull actually the pod, great transition. The flavor, the bottle upright in. Yeah, that, that that's pretty much it. My personal favorite's mango passion fruit, but you have a variety of options like watermelon, peach, oh. cucumber, orange, apple, and a bunch more. That's and actually again, so there's smart. No, calories, no sugar. It's just you gaslighting your brain since about 80% of That's taste so is actually smart. dependent on smell. Now, I've never had a problem drinking enough water, but after deciding to try to cut down on sodas and juices, I can honestly <laughs> say Arab has come in clutch more than a few times. And you know, this isn't just an ad. I literally tell y'all to drink water in every single video. And now I can help with that. So make sure you check out Arab and their many flavor pods using the link in the description. Use the code CASUALGO15 for 15% off. Fair. And like always, make sure y'all staying hydrated out there. Hydration is yeah, no problem for hydrated. a pocket-sized sand pup. Oh, and by the way, since their kidneys are always on desert mode, Fenix fox pee is super concentrated and smells like pee pee pee. <sighs> and since foxes will pee on any surface, two hours with a fennec under your roof and your house will smell like a skunk orgy. So yeah, don't be confusing them for good pets. You shouldn't confuse them for a pale fox either. That's offensive to them. They look similar, but the pale fox is slightly bigger, has a smaller, uh, smaller range, ears. and is overall the less clouded dupe of the fennec. And if you take a quick trip a couple hundred miles down south, you'll find the bat-eared fox. Unlike the rest of the fox family, their Those... meal plan contains almost entirely insects, with most of their protein coming from termites. Those satellite dish ears allows it to eavesdrop on termite affairs before it packs them. They've That's even gone crazy. ahead and invested in extra teeth to help with their termite terminating tendencies. Bat ears also acts on I'm fox type by living in what? packs, usually made of a mating pair and their children. They look the same way so weird. Work. It's like a fox that slept through the lecture on how to fox 101. I... 
which actually makes like, a lot of I actually like I 100% see where they got their name from right like bat box yeah I, I can see that I can see that their head looks like a fucking bat holy Sense, shit technically bat-eared foxes aren't true foxes there are 12 species Wait, that are in the title of true fox and four of them we've already mentioned the red fox the arctic the fennec oh. and the pale fox another true fox is the tibetan fox no, I'm serious. That's exactly what they look like. Like a yep. reborn human realizing reincarnation ain't always. <laughs> and you, Final Fantasy XIV and Joy is here because they have a pet that looks like that. There's a pet that looks like that in FF14. It, oh my god. Oh my god, it looks so bad. <laughs> FF14 fox pet. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, that's the one. Fuck the Sandfox video. Look at him. Oh, wait, wait. My fucking ass is in the way. My ass is in the way. Here, yeah. Big for a moment. But yeah, look at it. Look at him. <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> so silly. Looks like he was stung by a fucking bee. <laughs> Looks like that bitch was stung by a bee, man. Sweet. Or like nature got drunk and tried redrawing foxes strictly from memory and then uploaded it as a dare. It's the only animal able to side eye you while looking you dead in the face. A picture's worth a thousand words, and every image of a Tibetan Holy fox shit. tells a story of apathy, indifference, and a splash of contempt. Now you might be wondering why this fox looks like an AI-generated Renaissance painting. Some say it's to help them cope with a windy environment. Some say it's because their skulls are specialized for carnivory. I say God or nature, whoever did this to them has a twisted sense of humor. Evidently, the Tibetan fox does not. Also, you know the whole coyote badger team up that we all love so much and can't get enough yeah. of? Apparently, the Tibetan fox has the same type of arrangement with Himalayan brown bears, where the oh. bears will dig out pika burrows, that's a pika, and force them to run on land, where they get chased down by the fox. The that's fox isn't face, as big as the bear is, but the fox has better I, foot I, speed, so like any true dynamic face. duo, they cover each other's weaknesses. Even if one of them looks allergic to oxygen. I'm gonna run through a couple more foxes <laughs> real quick. We have Blanford's fox, found in the Middle East and Central Asia. They're easily the goats of foxes, Holy shit. able to scale anything short of 90 degrees and able to do the equivalent of a 10-foot box jump. Oh my god, Pokemon background ledges. sound. There's the Kit Fox of the Southwest, also known as the San Joaquin That's Fox. It's basically theme. the American edition of the Fennec Fox. We can't forget about the Corsac Fox of the Mongolian Steppe and Central Asian deserts. Then you got the Cape Fox of South Aww. America and the slightly bigger Indian-based Bengal Fox. I was not kidding. Unless your neighbors with the cast of Happy Feet, there's likely more foxes in your area than hot singles just dying to meet you. Foxes come in so many forms that they even have their equivalent of a shiny Pokemon. Wait, excuse you? Equivalent of a shiny Pokemon? Types of a Fennec, Red, Marble, Silver, Grey, Kid Fox. Kid Fox? Chet? Kit? Kitsu? Kit? Was there a calling? Is there a calling? Radiant fox, island fox, swift fox, crab eating fox, to be done sand fox, arctic fox, so adorable. Cape fox, Corsac fox, Darwin's fox, Bengal fox, Burnt forest fox, Pampas fox, pale fox, Calpio fox, Hungry fox? No. Ladies and gentlemen, I that. give you Hooray. the cross fox. Oh! It's actually a red fox with partial melanism. You know, the same thing that this turns leopards and jaguars into black reveal. creatures. <laughs> They're more common in Canada, where up to a third of the red fox population has this bimelanated alternate skin. And even rarer oh. than them are silver foxes, which is just a red fox with complete melanism, gang. Because yeah, red foxes aren't always red. Like I said, foxes exist in many forms, but there's one final form not even they saw oh coming. Oh my god. Pets. That's right, there's a population of domestic foxes in the world as we speak. Basically, the lore goes, this guy, Dmitry Belyaev, asked a question. How did we go from this apex predator to a lapdog? So he and graduate Ludmila Trut tried to see if they could replicate the wolf domestication process, except with foxes. They created a fox farm with 100 vixens and 30 males, and which foxes got to mate depended on which ones were the most tolerant of humans. The most human-friendly foxes fornicated, and this process repeated itself with the next generation. Essentially, they were selecting for traits that would make them the most fit for human companionship. 
And as the experiment wore on, the foxes went from not fearful of people to tolerant of people yeah, to actively so seeking to out people. Myself to Later generations like, uh, would develop I'll an affinity towards humans, huh? sniffing and licking people, and even replacing the aggressive yips and shrieks with more passive whimpers and pants. Aww. But what we weren't expecting was, as their personalities and attitudes towards people changed, so did their bodies. The more people-friendly foxes sported droopy ears and curled up tails. Oh, which is actually, pretty like different doggos. from the upright ears and downwards pointed tails of their wild cousins. That's, wow. And after decades of successfully playing God with Aww. foxes, we now live in a world where you can adopt and own a pet silver fox. <gasps> now here's the part of the video where I tell you why you ain't ready for that. They poop and Wait. pee everywhere, and there isn't a surface in the uh, house they can't get to. You little shit. They scream, especially at night. You'll be finding out what the fox says while you're trying to count <laughs> shit. Not to mention you're probably gonna sacrifice furniture for their happiness. Who that cares? combination adds up to a good chance you're up at 3 a.m. Take all my possessions. Off the top of your fridge while cursing yourself for not just getting a hamster. You can probably find a way to make it work. Oh if my you do god! The research and you're committed enough, but. The fox is just shilling on that lady's shoulder. What the fuck? That you watch all the YouTube videos that I would have watched anyway. <laughs> great. That's great. And I'm going to say this as many times as it's applicable. If you're that willing to sacrifice your sleep, sanity, and social life for a screaming, pooping, deratio of a creature, oh, I would. just have children. No! foxes are great wild animals, but they can really be some mid-as-hell pets. But that's gonna do it for this video. Friendly reminder that I do have a book out. It's called 100 Animals That Can Redacted Kill You. Link in the description if you're interested. Shout out to Arab for sponsoring this video. Shout out to you all for watching this video. Drink water, wear sunscreen, touch grass, hug your parents, and I'ma see y'all in the next one. Oh yeah, and happy birthday your parents, and I'ma see y'all. Shout out to you all for watching this video. Drink water, wear sunscreen, touch grass, hug your parents, and I'ma see y'all in the next one. Oh yeah, and happy birthday to me. You. Oh, are you my porky potato? Are you my porky potato? Hi. Hi. Yoink. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Yoink the camera. It did a little yonking! It did a little yonking! Here guys go, here's the link. Oh my god! I love foxes. Oh my god, his fucking face, this fucking face, man. I can't. <laughs> the silver fox was the one they had at the petting zoo. Oh. Oh my god. I'd rather have a fox than a fucking child, to be honest. I'd rather have a fox than a child. Don't at me. Foxes over children. Foxes over children. 100%. <laughs>